the Russian tactics in Syria are now being replayed in Ukraine. Uh, Tom Fletcher is a former ambassador. He's argued that there are other lessons to be learned from Syria. We can speak to him now. Morning to you. Morning. Um, what are those other lessons? Well, I mean, I think we've seen this before, this hor horrifying, grim, brutal escalation of violence as, as Putin doubles down on on terror. It, it's what he did uh, in Syria alongside Bashar al-Assad. And it's, it's unimaginable for those uh, under the bombs. I just have such admiration for Philippe and his colleagues going towards the violence to try to uh, to try to help. And I do hope people will support UNICEF and, and NGOs on the ground. But yeah, I think one lesson we can learn from, uh, from Syria is we've got to stop looking at Putin as some kind of great strategist. He's not. He's an opportunist gangster. Uh, he's not somehow outsmarting everyone. It's just that he's out killing them. He's more willing to kill people than the rest of us are to pursue his ends. Um, we've got to work on the things that he most fears. And in this case, it's a shift in the Chinese position. Mm. It's the Russian people re waking up and recognizing that Putin's policy is not their policy. And it's the rest of us being more resolved, more coherent, better able to stand up and to reduce those dependencies that we have on Russia, including on Russian energy. Now, all that stuff takes time, though, doesn't it? And we don't really have time because China st stepping up, the, the, the Russian people perhaps protesting more and taking to the streets once they feel the pinch. That's not going to happen tomorrow, is it? It isn't. It isn't. And it's little consolation to Ukrainians under the bombs uh, at, the at the moment. But the tectonic plates here are moving in different ways. Uh, unexpected ways, ways that Putin didn't anticipate. Okay, he would have priced in the sanctions. He knew the sanctions were coming. He was willing to pay that price or mm. have Russians pay that price. But he didn't price in the fact that Germany would increase its defense spending in this way, that Europe would actually respond in such a coherent way, that the Ukrainians would turn out in such numbers and with such uh, courage that NATO would become more magnetic. I don't think he factored in the level of public revulsion in the rest of the world and the impact of that on the measures that we are now taking against Russia. So it's not all going uh, his way. No, it certainly isn't. And we also hear, uh, I think it was Ben Wallace who, who said this, Defence Secretary said it previously, that um, some of the Russian uh, troops uh, are apparently sabotaging their own vehicles. And that explains why perhaps they're not making the inroads uh, that they were expecting to. They seem to be running out of fuel quite often, which again is something you thought that they would be uh, you know, trained to to kind of think ahead. How much of the lack of uh, you have to we have to put this into context because clearly, you know, people are dying and bombs are raining down. But that the, the lack of progress. This is not where we expected Russia to be, is it? On day seven, we expected them, um, sadly, to be uh, to be kind of further in Ukraine. So, what do you put that down to? Well, I think, again, I mean, the Russian military machine is not as extraordinary as it, it claims. It's just more, more brutal, mm. um, le less willing to uh, go along with the normal conventions uh, of war that others are. It's more, more willing to, to terrify uh, civilians, to, to, to target civilians. And we've just been hearing uh, the effect of that. It's really important that we document all of this. Again, that's no consolation to people on the other end of it. But at some point, this ends with the people giving the orders, the people firing the guns held to account. At some, end, at some point, this ends with diplomatic process. And we're nowhere near that point at the mm. moment. I'm afraid everything points to escalation. But eventually, the guns do stop. Mm. Putin is a disruptor. He can destroy, but he can't hold. He can't build. And ultimately, this ends in a negotiation either with him over some sort of frozen conflict or much more likely with his successor over a different role for Russia, a more legitimate place at the international table. Uh, I'm afraid that moment doesn't come soon, I fear, but we do get there in the end. No, and how interesting. Um...